thank you for coming all today. Uh, today, as mentioned before, this is a coding session, so it will be more chilled. So feel free to ask questions, to interrupt if you have any questions, and then I will try to, to, to answer them on the spot. And Wojtek, if I just, you know, like, will get into the zone and will be in full screen and will not notice that, then just, yeah, don't, feel free to interrupt. Um, okay, so let me start with the short presentation because I do want to make sure that all of us are the same page because uh, two of you, uh, some of you I already have met and know that uh, they, you, you've been familiar with her for quite some time, but for others, just to make sure. Yeah, uh, so today uh, on the call, um, it's uh, me. So I'm Chris and I'm a founder and a C currently a CEO at Verb. Uh, my background is in software engineering. So actually that's why it's uh, me today coding. Um, so just to make sure I'm not, you know, like I, I don't code anymore. Uh, on a regular basis but just to you know like to just to give you some sort of idea it's like even if you don't have a, like a big experience and up to date experience with coding you should still uh, be able to create a verb with unity unity is very cool engine to to work with there are so many resources and tutorials that you can learn from and we try to make also that our plugin is as easy uh, to use as possible. And also with the call already mentioned, Wojciech, uh, Wojciech Wojtas is, is our COO and he's, he's the one moderating the session. Um, so yeah, so before we start into the coding session, I will just briefly go through, through what is Verb actually and why are we even, you know, like bothering with, with whole virtual beings technology. And then we will go into Unity. This will be, you know, a coding session. So there will be definitely Unity editor and a bit of tinkering here and there. Hopefully, by the end of today's session, we will have a working project. I did make already, you know, like a testing before test project before, but you know, this will be a live session. So uh, be 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 gentle with me. Um, so yeah. So this will the Unity in Unity we will be creating today AR uh, application. Uh, Unity has great support for uh, AR, and on top of that, we will add uh, both Ready Player Me SDK and Verb SDK. Hey, um, I'm Chris, a virtual being made in our CEO image. Internet users are bombarded with textual information, and businesses have less than 8 seconds to attract customers' attention. Only 10% of the information is retained when read, compared to 95% when watched in the video. Essentially, today's flat interfaces are not enough to keep users engaged. Brands struggle to provide an engaging human-like communication at scale. Data show that due to poor customer service, U.S. companies lose a total of $1.6 trillion. So essentially, you know, like once you have a virtual being, uh, then you don't have to speak anymore. And uh, what you actually see here is the, the core reason why we, we work with virtual beings, because today's interfaces, as you already heard, they are not enough. And the interface that you are actually seeing and the video that you are seeing comes from augmented reality application, actually. So this was my virtual being uh, integrated into Unity and be recorded from my iPhone screen. Um, so this is something that I started using in, in my page deck. So hopefully by the end of today's session, you will at least know how to incorporate something similar into your presentations or whatever sales uh, decks that you will be creating from now on. And we believe basically that virtual wake is this missing link in an automated communication. So obviously chatbots are all around us already, but they are not that engaging anymore. Um, so. With virtual beings, the one big plus, especially one when you can use your voice to speak with it, it is something that you don't have to learn anymore because this is something basically which we are learning since birth, since birth, how to communicate with others. And with Verb, for those who don't know yet, we allow to create your virtual being in the cloud. And with our approach, once you create and configure it in, in our cloud, then you can actually deploy it anywhere. So we do have a web integration, so you can actually um, add your virtual being to your own website. 
Um, we do have like, um, and I, I, Mark already mentioned that, that he's waiting for that. So we do have a kiosk and digital signage solution, which will be released uh, later in the summer. So second half of August. Uh, and essentially this is some, this is a, this is kind of a device that you can use with, with, with the same virtual being core, basically. And last but not least, and mostly that's something which is relevant to today's session, you can actually use it in VR and AR. So in any kind of virtual world of the upcoming metaverse. And I believe since you all came here, you already are familiar with the metaverse and that essentially, you know, like a lot of big companies are heavily investing into this kind of future. So, well, you can like it or not, but this will probably happen. So those two examples that you see basically are uh, using our Unity SDK, one in VR application, the other one is once again, AR application. And what's really interesting with virtual beings is with this kind of approach, with virtual being as the core interface, you can actually build seamless omnichannel experience that works 24 seven. And so you can start your experience over web, translate to a mobile app, and at the end, you can greet your customer inside the store, for instance. And we basically provide a platform which allows you to import your own avatar. We don't have our own avatars. Basically, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. There are so many great uh, frameworks where you can create avatar, but only if you, when you create an avatar, it's usually static. So you can't do much with it. Um, so usually you need to, to, to create a virtual being. You also need to add your own conversational AI. And um, for this particular area, we do have our own basic solution for creating conversation in AI, which I might present to you uh, later on if we have enough time. Uh, but also you can actually transform your existing chatbot into one. So all more or less any kind of like conversation chatbot engine that is uses text input and text output produces text output can be transformed into a virtual being. And on top of that, you need to speech recognition, speech uh, generation. So basically to both generate the voice and recognize uh, someone's voice as well. And all of that is basically part of our platform. And we provide all the necessary scripts to, to glue these things together um, into form of SDKs for JavaScript, Unity, and Unreal Engine as well uh, as pre-built applications. So pre-built applications are now uh, coming. So we actually published yesterday two uh, mobile apps. So one to Google uh, Store, the other one to App Store, um, which will be a very basic um, tool where which makes which allows you basically to test your virtual being created in our cloud. And the second one already mentioned will be the MetaHuman kiosk, which will be uh, available later on. So uh, for today's sessions, uh, I have decided to go on with Ready Player Me avatars. Uh, this is a very great framework because they have stylized avatar cartoonish, by which is the, well, what? So their framework is accessible over web. So essentially you can just log into this website like verb.readyplayer.me to create your own avatar. And uh, you can in, use your photo as a base and then you can customize things like clothing, uh, mm, hairstyles, et cetera. I do have a video for that. So once I speak, I might actually, hopefully if this works. Uh, okay, I think I have to open it right here. Um, so essentially you can basically um, customize things like, yeah, I will choose my photo as a base for, for the process. Uh, it takes less than 10 seconds, basically, to get your first result. And then you can actually customize things like tone color, skin color, uh, skin tone color, um, clothing, hairstyles, accessories. And this is fun because this is something that you can, you know, like over web, so you don't have to install any kind of like third party software to do that. So actually you can create your own avatar in less than five minutes. Um, and once you do with Ready Player Me, uh, we are actually tightly integrated. So you both can use it in web and in Unity SDK, as well in the, in the mobile application that I have mentioned. So this is really great. So this is one of the ways on how to create actually seamless experience. Um, and obviously you might go with a different um, avatar framework to, to generate your avatar, but there are some limitations. So obviously for web, you can have too big of a model. So some of the software that you will find on the market will basically generate your very photorealistic one, like a meta human, for instance, but it will not be suitable to work on web. 
Um, with Ready Player Me, it's something that actually you can both launch on web, uh, in mobile, in actually almost like all those older phones. Uh, so I think we at some point tested like um, Samsung Free, that even we are able to run Unity uh, on Samsung uh, Free, uh, and, and then it still works. So that's that's why you know like sometimes stylized and low poly avatars are better especially if you want to target more more of our audience. So I do think some questions. So just, okay, so do we have someone in the waiting room? I think I had to disable Wojtek waiting room. So people should be able to come and go now. Um, yeah, so coming back to the topic. Um, um, so this is something that I will be using later on, just to want to make sure that you do understand what is Ready Player Me, how to create one and how to essentially later on follow through my, my advice on how to use Unity SDK and uh, build your own solution. And the main entry point for you, uh, for, for well, basically once you do it afterwards, or even if you try to uh, go with me uh, during this coding sessions, uh, is our documentation page. So it's basically docs.verb.ai. And once you open uh, the documentation, there are you know like multiple sections, but the one that will be definitely uh, the most important during this, this session is the Unity integration uh, section and where there is a basic setup page. And this basically allows, like is a step-by-step -step instruction on how to import our SDK into Unity and, um, and make it work um, once you have obviously set up your virtual being in our dashboard. But I do know some of you already have, if you don't, then obviously Wojtek, you can you might post, post uh, maybe in the chat the, the link on how to actually you know, request the access to your virtual being. Uh, the thing which is not yet ready, but this is part of something that will be released later on, is on how to actually build more advanced uh, project with Unity, which includes obviously like AR or VR capabilities. But since you already are uh, here, then you will have the live version of it. Okay, so I think uh, we are ready to go. So now I'm switching to, to basically uh, coding mode. Um, so yeah, so what I do recommend to you is essentially use, if you build a new project, then essentially go with the, the, the most uh, recent one. And I think the one, well, there is a new, mo most recent version, than, than I am using, but 2021.3 uh, is the, the ballpark uh, where you should basically, um, where you should start if you create a new project, because at least that's what we actively test. So um, our SDK should work with uh, Unity 2019 already, but uh, we do know there are some, you know, like changes in Unity engine uh, for serializing and deserializing JSON in the process. So if you can go with the, the most recent version of the Unity um, for the sake of your project. Um, obviously, if you have any troubles integrating into your project, then just let us know. We do have a Discord community for this kind of situation. So once again, Wojtek, if I can ask you to <laughs> post the link to, to our Discord, so at least our, our attendees know where to, where to go afterwards if they have any troubles um, with integrating. Okay. So Unity comes uh, with basically some templates for kickstarting your project. Mm, and actually for the sake of this session, I have tested today the AR temple, template, which I think is the best way to go if you want to build well and test your virtual being in augmented reality. This is pretty simple. You just need to, you know, like go, once you create a new project then you see the templates of the list and just find an AR uh, template for, for that. Obviously, you just need to change it to some sort of name, so verb working, so verb working uh, unity with unity as the case. So let's let's call it that. Save it somewhere. So I will just create a new project. I did had some folder for that. Yeah, webinar. Okay, new folder. Or maybe here. Okay, select folder and then just create a project. It will take a moment to start a project. So I do have some time for questions. So there will be some, you know, like waitings here and there. So feel free to use this time to, to ask any kind of questions if you have one. I 
think I do hope I allowed you to unmute. Yes, you do can. Okay, but we are ready to go. go. So, okay, so this uh, template essentially um, set up all the necessary things that are required to build a Unity project and make it work on uh, either AR Kit or AR Core device. So AR Core uh, is an Android technology, AR Kit comes from Apple. So essentially it will work on, on this kind of project will work on most modern phones, which basically um, have AR capabilities. Um, okay, and this very simple project creates like a blank, blank AR scene. And basically, this is the the scene that I will be using for, for the sake of this uh, this project. Okay, so the first step that obviously once you create a new project is, and that's the, usually the, the the same story where whenever you do a new project in Unity, is to import plugin. And the plugins obviously you can get from our um, documentation page. So there is a link to download the core plugin. So this is something that you just need to click. You might want to make sure that you use the, the verb being plugin 3.3.0.1 version. Uh, so this is something that I will be do downloading now. Already, just in advance, I will be importing Ready Player Me uh, as the okay, because I will be importing their avatar. So just to make sure, um, yeah, no, this is not the link. This is the link. Uh, this is something also you might want to download. And the version that I have, well, we have been testing the Unity SDK for the past few weeks, actually probably for the few past months, is the one Ready Player Me dot 1.10 version. So this is the one that definitely works with the, with our SDK. Uh, so that's that's something just to one one more thing that you might want to to check out. Um, I do so. I do, let me just import the the SDKs, and I do see a question, so I will try to answer that as soon as possible. Uh, so obviously, you know, like there are multiple ways on how to can import package, but one of them is just basically <laughs> drag and dropping that. So yeah, I will be doing that. So this is the first. You do want to import most of the stuff stuff that you see at, that you have in our package. If you don't, then just do it cautiously. But you know, like if it's your first time doing the project, I recommend using all the things which are provided in package, which basically also includes the necessary animations for for making your uh, avatar behave naturally. So this is pretty important. But obviously, you are not limited to that. So essentially, what once you familiarize uh, yourself with our SDK you might want or a need uh, or have a need to change those animations so feel free to do that especially if you use a different avatar that's something that you can do mm, but for ready player me and character creator avatars uh, there is a basic animation package which basically essentially works already so you don't have to do that okay so first sdk is downloaded you can confirm by checking the plugins folder and if you see the verb uh, inside there, then this is this means that uh, the SDK was pro uh, imported properly. The second one is obviously Ready Player Me. So just let me drag and drop that. Um, and for their SDK, since we are already using the Unity 2021, you should uncheck Newton Soft. So essentially, starting Unity 2020. The Newton Soft JSON is already part of the uh, data list that is being distributed with Unity. So if you just you, if you don't want to resolve that issue later on, then just uncheck this part. So important doesn't have to be imported. Actually, it will conflict if you import it. But well, that's something you can solve by yourself. Okay, so there is a question. So how can we integrate three D model and other model on VR headset? So essentially, um, if it's the Ready Player Me avatar then the steps that we are doing today are all the same. So you will just have to change, and I will show you that in a moment, what kind of setting you do have to change. Um, but uh, if it's a third-party model, so something that you create from scratch, 
then obviously you will have to either retarget the animations which are provided with our SDK or just let us know so we can you know like help you figure those those out so if needed and if you don't have the necessary skills to to essentially retarget the animation then we do this kind of things also um, for our customers and partners if needed okay so um we do have two sdks imported okay so before i forget actually because we are doing the ar project and basically i had just opened project settings and there is one page which you might want to check um if you uh if you do an ar project because currently by default the unity uh, sets your project as default platform that you are developing on so this one is uh, obviously for in my case it's a mac uh, but since i will be testing it on uh, i am um, my iphone then i'm just switching already to ios uh, platform but if you don't have like an iPhone, you can just switch to Android if you will be testing it on, on Android phone. So I'm just doing it in advance, just so I don't forget that later on. So that's the first thing to do. And the second one will be adding the scene. Because if you will be later on building the project, just make sure you do have the, the scene that you are developing inside the list here, because if not, you will not see it <laughs> later on uh, as a result. Okay, so we did change that. And as, as you can see, in the project settings already switched to the iOS tab. And you need to tick this one. So actually, this will uh, install, import uh, AR kit package. And obviously, this will also inform uh, your device that this particular application has AR capabilities. So it's, it's a necessary step. step. Don't want to um, um, talk too much about this. Um, same story if you are doing this for Android, then just take an AR core. And since we are already here, use so XR plugin uh, from uh, Unity basically handles both AR and VR. So answering your question about the VR headset. So you might, if you are developing for Oculus Quest, so this is something that you will be taking if you are developing for, for Oculus Quest. If you do standalone VR, then usually it's like uh, here. You can either, you know, like build for Oculus. Um, and in my case, it's not visible here, but if you are on a Windows machine, and th I think there is already like a Steam VR support uh, enabled here. But yeah, so this is something you might check if you, if you are developing on, on Windows. So coming back to, yeah, I think we are done for now. We will see later on if there is something not working. Okay, so we have a very basic scene. Um, so the scene that you are seeing right now is all things which are necessary to make it work inside the AR core or AR kit. I will not talk too much about the things which are here. Yeah, I think you will find all the resources uh, in the internet. So all the specifics were what this, the, all the components are for. I will probably only focus on the things that we are changing or, or adding to, to the session. Okay, so what I like to do whenever I do a project, I really try to organize the content uh, in my scene. So I usually add all the necessary, you know, like models, assets, when, uh, by assets I mean all the, I don't know, like uh, scenery you might want to add. So maybe you will make like a shop interior or whatever, just like it having it under one, one root. In this case, the first thing that I will do actually is to import my avatar. Uh, okay, <laughs> thanks, thanks for for uh, for uh, investment suggestion. You know, you might want to invest your time into into the startup. So if you want to, you know, um, build something, this is something that can make you money. And if that makes you money, then you might earn some money to basically invest in in the startup. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so that's the the first thing to to do. Uh, or maybe you will create a different startup. Sorry for, you know, like trying to, to get you on board with our startup. You actually can invent a new startup using Verp SDK and you are free to do so. So if you at any point, you know, like think that maybe, you know, like a next AR tutor or AR teacher will is the thing that might become a startup. And if we can bring that, you know, like uh, dream come true, then that's something that we would love gladly do. Mm, or help you in doing so. Okay, so what I opened is a red, red standard Ready Player Me loader. So this is something that basically um, comes with Ready Player Me SDK. 
And the avatar that you had created on the website, the, the one that I was showing in the, in the beginning, this is something that you might, uh, well, you will be probably importing. So I will just copy paste the link that was generated in, in the Ready Player Me editor. And then I will just copy paste it here. You might want to check this thing, use avatar caching. So it, this is something that's just to make sure that your avatar will be already stored inside your project. So it will no, not be reloading in case you do some changes over avatar. And I do like to already turn on the eye animations because it already adds some basic scripts on top of avatar, which includes basically blinking. Um, so yeah, really important. Well, there are some things which are important in virtual being creation. I will not go into that. There is a previous webinar which we spoke about all the things which are you know, crucial if you create a virtual being. So essentially, yeah, blinking and you know, like all those behaviors, idle behaviors that are super important to, to get a really good result. Okay, and then I click just load. And once I do, this will uh, add an avatar in the scene. You might want to ins inspect your avatar. So this is something that I had created. I can already see it in, in my editor. Um, so this is, yeah, so essentially nothing more to do here for now. Uh, I will just move it to, to my scene uh, just to make sure that I have it more organized because I will be adding more things to, to the scene. So I just, well, I like to keep it clear. clear. Okay, so this, the next step is actually adding the necessary components from verb. And essentially, once you explode the verb SDK, you will see that there is a, a folder called prefab, which already um, have all the necessary, well, have some sort of pre-customized, pre-setup components. And I do recommend using them because if you don't use them, then you will have, you know, a bit of work and extra work that we have to, to do in the process. So usually the best way to is just to, to drag and drop our verb being prefab. And there are two which you can choose from currently. One is for Ready Player Me avatars. The other one is for Character Creator. They are more for Dust 3D, but obviously if you, if you need them and if you have this kind of avatar, then feel free to explore. So I'm just now dragging, dropping the, the uh, Ready Player Me uh, prefab from our SDK. Once again, want to make sure that it's already in, in, in the same route. And you will see all the components which, uh, which are part of our SDK, which basically drives the dynamic behavior of our uh, virtual beings, which includes gestures, idle behaviors, lip sync, um, all the audio, necessary audio scripts, etc., and so on. So this is the basic component that you want to integrate. And obviously to make it work, you do have to first create an avatar. So Wojtek already posted the link, feel free to, to sign up if you, if you need your own virtual being. I have already created, well, probably dozens from, from the whole lifetime of our startup. Uh, virtual beings for myself, but for now I do have uh, two uh, that I'm using. Um, so I will be actually testing for the first uh, for the first uh, um, for this for the sake of this exercise. I will use the one the interactive being. So essentially, we do have two types of uh, virtual beings that you can create in our platform. What is one is interactive, which actually requires you to create a chatbot. Uh, to use, and I ho do hope that some of you already did. And the other one is called like presentation mode, and this essentially doesn't require you to create a chatbot. You could use our built-in editor to create conversations, but this does not include speech recognition capabilities. So this is something cool, might be useful to some of you, maybe if you are doing an onboarding scenario or training scenario. Uh, but if you have like a, if you want to, you know, like do some sort of kiosk uh, integration or maybe integrate into VR or AR application, then I would say that definitely speech recognition is really a, a must because people will not be using a screen. They will be basically interacting with your content in 3D and then using your voice is the best, the, the best way to communicate with virtual being. Okay, so what you have to do once you do uh, have your own virtual being is basically to download the configuration file. So this is in your dashboard under the big deployment tab uh, section. And this is something that you just need to download. And once you do, and then this is something that you just need to add to your project. So I'm now dragging, dropping it to resources folder. 
and you should see that there is a um, configuration file already available. And then once you do, then the only thing that you need to do is to drag and drop the downloaded configuration uh, file uh, on, onto the prep app. And just, you know, like before you, you, we click the play button and we have the first result, you do need to do two more things. So one is actually adding the audio source. So audio source is a component which basically allows you to play sound inside your uh, Unity scene. So this is something which we usually add to the avatar because this is this will move with your avatar. So if you want to actually use 3D spatialized audio, then you should actually um, route it to your uh, avatar component. Because if your avatar will be moving, then you should then your audio source, the the, the place where the the sound will be basically being played, like mean the voice of your virtual being, should be also moving with you with your avatar. So that's the first thing to do. Um, and then you just need to drag and drop the components. So drag and drop the audio source that you have created to your avatar. The second one is drag and drop the animator. So essentially our uh, verb uh, prefab can, yeah, can, and can drive uh, any kind of like avatar and any kind of like animator con control but then just may, you need to make sure to drag and drop the reference to it um, under, under the verb action player component. Okay, so that's enough um, for, for customization of the, 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 the our SDK. For Ready Player Me, uh, this comes with the predefined animation controller. So don't worry if you don't know what that is. Definitely this is something that once you learn about Unity, you will learn about all, all about animators and animation controllers. So essentially what I do recommend is actually changing it to one of the animation controllers that we provide because it works better with our SDK and then um, this something well. Uh, you just need to open our verb package once again, go to ready pray me male or female animation package and just drag and drop the, the animator onto your avatar. And I think it's it's all enough to just hit the first play and make your make our virtual being speed. Just let me confirm. Okay, you can see that there is an issue. So there is no audio listener in the scene. I did have noticed that once you actually in create the template project with AR, it doesn't come with audio listener. And well, this is something that you should add to your camera. So this essentially consumes all the audio sources from your scene. And now I think once we hit the play, we Hello should- Hello there. I'm Chris, CEO at Verb, or his virtual avatar, to be specific. Yeah. Real Chris is probably busy now, so I'll be happy to help you in his place. You can also schedule a meeting with the real Chris. Is that okay with you? So I do hope that you were able to hear the sound. Uh, if you can, if someone just can confirm in the chat if that you are still able to hear a sound from, from my computer, because it probably does. Yeah, okay, perfect. Okay, so this is a very basic example. So you see that once you hit the scene, then you have your avatar moving and being connected to our SDK. That's basically enough to have a very, very basic integration. Obviously, there will be more because the, at the end, we do want to create an AR application. So still bear with me. We do still have like an hour or 50 minutes at least to do so. So I think we will be done, done by now, by then. Um, okay, so this is the end of speaking. The thing that, that you were not able to see um, the avatar here is that once I hit play, this essentially already uses the AR core, Hello there. AR kit session. I'm Chris, CEO at Verb, or his uh, virtual okay, avatar, let me to be specific. Mute him for a moment. Um, and then basically the camera just set somewhere in the strange position in the scene. So it's currently in the root of the folder. I will see if I can move it maybe to just maybe show you that. Yeah, you do can actually position the camera in the scene uh, during the play editor. So you might you might you might want to change that if you are um, you know like doing some sort of testing in the game mode. But well, um, probably you you should make sure that once you deploy your application that it will be zeroed out because essentially it can lead to maybe some strange of results in the rendering later on. So don't recommend that. Maybe the other way to do so will be to add yourself another camera to the scene. 
very basic one like a, you might name it uh, for instance like maybe testing camera and then you can position position it however you want the shortcut for actually positioning quickly positioning camera in your scene is you just navigate whenever wherever you want in the scene and then on mac you should just click Control shift f command shift f and i think the same shortcut is for windows like Control shift f and this will actually center the camera to the current position of the unity editor and yeah once you now change the game mode you can see that i'm actually using now the testing camera instead of the ar uh, camera okay so the first step of basic integration is done so what you should do next so obviously you already see that the virtual being is speaking but now you want probably provide it with some sort of ui because yeah obviously you can already hear your um our virtual being speak but you might want to also make an accessible application so actually we do have a very basic uh ui which already comes uh, predefined in our package it comes with two flavors a uh, horizontal and vertical layout and if you do mobile application i do recommend to to use a portrait mode for that and for if if you will be doing this this uh, the same similar project then just basically drag and drop the vertical layout uh, to your scene the one that comes from our package and import tmp essentials so this is something which basically will provide you a very basic ui now it looks strange but there is a feature that you can use inside a unity editor which essentially allows you to test in different kind of uh, screen settings and maybe i will actually change to maybe like iphone yeah i will be later on using it testing it on iphone 11 pro so you can just change that uh, and then now you can see how your ui will look like uh, once once uh, basically deployed on the phone okay so you added the the ui you are free feel free to create this kind of ui from scratch uh, so you just you know you can use our prefab as a reference if you want to do something from from the scratch but just make sure that you need to connect some of the things together and the first one you actually need to your our uh, verb uh, verb being core like prefab you just need to reference the layout that will be consuming the the events that come comes from from the server and by events that comes from the server i mean responses of your virtual being which includes audio that you can play uh, on your audio source but also all the additional uh, features which are available in our platform which includes uh, support for cards quick reply buttons slide and so on um, and we, if you use our prefab, there actually is a helper action. So you can just search an adverb conversation context. This will actually find the layout that you have added to the scene and will automatically set it up in the, in the verb being prefab. You might want to remove anything which is like an extra, uh, which is unnecessary to have so. Um, so yeah, this is the, first, the next step just to make sure that uh, for instance, the, the, the cards and the quick replies will be send it, sent out to the uh, layout. And also, since you can see that our layout does provide text input, so maybe your users will not want to use voice to communicate with visual beings. Maybe they will have to type an email address or a phone number. This is something which is tricky to, to um, speak with, like say out loud especially in a noisy environment. So in this kind of situations, you might maybe, okay, please now, instead of saying your email address, please now type your email address. So that's something that you can just, you know, like integrate into your conversation. And just to make sure that our UI works with, with and basically will send any, anything that will be inputted into the text to our service is just basically to connect, to reference the virtual being that uh, will be consuming those text uh, user text inputs obviously you might want the, the reason why it's a bit complicated and you need to reference um those things here and there is because you might want to have multiple things in one scene and then essentially it's up to you on build some sort of logic which you know like changes the context changes the virtual being that your user currently speaks in Obviously, you know, it's not something that I can cover. We can cover in this kind of SDK. Obviously, it all depends on the use case that you will have on how you might want to 
uh, glue things together. Okay, so I think uh, we have a second step. So once now I hit play, you will not only hear the virtual beings speak, but you will also see subtitles and you will see some sort of the additional context, content uh, on the virtual beings. So just make, let me play. Hi, I'm okay, Chris, CEO maybe let's at Verb, or his virtual representation, camera, yeah. to be exact. Real Chris is probably doing some CEO stuff, but I'll be happy to step in here and talk to you a bit. You can also schedule a meeting with the real Chris. How does that sound? And now I, if I just type, okay, just to type something out, forgot about one thing. If you add any kind of UI components to your scene, also make sure to add event system. That's a unity thing. Uh, don't, can't, you know, argue with that. It's just necessary step if you any, add any kind of UI. So that's why we weren't successful, but let me once again hit play. If I just disappear, okay, I think I can change the UI. Okay, so once again, I hit play. Hi, I'm Chris, Disabled CEO of Verb, or his virtual representation. And then you can exact. see that there is an input here. Real Chris is already. probably doing some CEO stuff, Enabled but I'll be focus. happy to step in here and talk so to you. So if I now it. type and click enter, you can also schedule a I'm meeting with the real Chris. Already sending How does that to the sound? server. Hi, good and to see you again. How are you? While Chris is busy, I'll do my best. I'm great and happy to be and here. And so on. You know, the thing that your virtual link will, will respond to basically depends on the chatbot that you have used. If you already are familiar with a product that you know, uh, you know that we have a couple of engines that you can integrate from out of the box. So yeah, so that's enough to basically make uh, our UI uh, work. This, the thing that you didn't see any cards here or quick reply button is probably this chat, but, and this configuration doesn't have any configured, but well, please, uh, you need to, you know, like believe that essentially if you, if you do an add product cards and quick reply buttons, then this will work. If we have enough time, I will, at the later stage, I will just switch to different uh, virtual being configuration and that just show you all the additional components. But I, first I want to make sure that we actually will create an AR application by the end of today's session. Okay, so this already, we have set up the Ready Player My Avatar. We connected it with our SDK and with our virtual, with my virtual being instance in the cloud. And we have connected a UI. So our users will see also the additional UI components as well. They will be able to use type text just to con converse with, with text input with, with our virtual bit. So obviously the last step that we still need to add is voice capabilities. Because essentially you might don't want to have your um, app uh, the voice capabilities uh, because maybe some sort of, you know, like you want to be strictly GT GDPR compliant. So just want to make sure that any kind of like voice is being processed inside your ap application. So make, well, you, it in most situations, it doesn't, you know, like restrict users because in our case, voice is only, only processed. So it's not stored anywhere. So in case, uh, you know, like if you are building like B2B or B2C application, you should be okay. But well, some companies have strange policies, so they don't allow to any kind of like voice processing, especially if it's a third party speech recognition engine, then this is something you basically might want not to have as a part of your, um, of your project. So that's why it's not basically enabled by default, but we do have a prefab for that. So our SDK comes with voice active detection module. So this is part of our SDK. So once again, this is sits in our plugin and you just need to drag and drop that. And what it does, it essentially detect the voice of your users. And when someone is done with speaking to your virtual being, it sends the, the voice uh, to our servers. That's where it's being processed and... Uh, okay. Uh, but then that's where being processed and, and basically just, you know, like for the sake of uh, generating the text to for further analysis. So, okay, thank you, Monica, for joining. Um, maybe, you know, like in the future, you will you will find uh, some sort of applications. Some of our partners, some of uh, that are already here on this call, they are right now integrating virtual beings into their, their applications. So you might still want to stick around uh, in today's sessions. Maybe, you know, like some of you will, we want to share on actually how you are thinking about integrating virtual beings into your project. But well, 
coming back to the integration. So once you add a voice recorder, the thing that you want to once again do is to uh, drag and drop virtual Bing. Once again, if you have multiple Bings uh, in your scene, then you might want to write some sort of script, which basically dynamic cha dynamically changes the uh, the being that uh, you know, like your your you are sending the the voice um, voice samples of your users. But once we do it now and hit play, then I will be now you from now on using my voice to communicate with with my virtual being. Hi, I'm Chris, CEO at Verb, or his virtual How representation, to be exact. Real Chris is probably doing some CEO stuff. But I'll be happy to step in here and talk to you a bit. Okay, I might. Have, you can... I need to change actually. My, yeah, I do. I'm using wrong microphone, so that's why I'm not getting any. Okay, once again. Mm. Hi, I'm Chris, CEO at Verb. How are his you? Virtual representation, to be exact. Real Chris is probably doing some CEO stuff, but I'll be happy to step in here and talk to you a bit. You can also schedule a meeting with the real Chris. How does that sound? How are you? Enjoying my time here at Verb. I hope you're having a good time too. Who are you? I was created by Verb, a company that provides a framework for bringing to life virtual beings, like myself, to act as CEO's virtual assistant. And so on and so on. You can see that you know, like whenever you are you I'm using my voice and speaking, then you know, like SDK is detecting that I I can tell talking. you a bit about Verb and, and its product, or I can I'm schedule you a meeting a moment, with the real Chris. Informs you with, uh, Which one would you like? And sends, yeah, I'm now being interrupted by my virtual being. So it's my show now. Um not yours. Um so yeah, so this is something that is basically sent being sent out to the server once I'm I'm done currently, but the user is done when speaking. Okay, I think there is a question, or is it like just the Aditya is saying uh, he's by? Hello. Yeah, hello. Uh, I want to ask you one thing. Mm -hmm. Go on. Uh, would it be possible for us to make uh, the Jarvis like the Tony Stark had? Yes. So essentially, there is no limit to that. So obviously, with SDK, you have everything which is needed to build this kind of, uh, you know, like project and visualize like a Jarvis or whatever. The thing that you will have put a lot of effort is basically generating a conversational AI. So since we are already here, I will just briefly show you how actually it uh, works. So my Chris Assistant, the one that I'm actually using in this product is done with BotPress. Essentially, you will have to learn a bit, you know, like on what it means to create intents, how to create conversational uh, scenarios with, with combine, by combine, combining intense recognition with, you know, like um, responses, depending on the context. And by context is either intent or something called name entity recognition. So actually you do need to not only recognize the intent, so what your user is trying to achieve, but in some situations also understand maybe they are asking about a particular city. So entity might be a city that they are asking about. So I'm looking for flight tickets to London, for instance. So in this case, the London is an ent entity that you need to identify and then build some sort of logic using botters or actually any kind of like conversational like AI engine to, to build this kind of logic. If you are lazy, uh, then we have a way to, to make uh, GPT-3 work as conversational AI inside your project. So I think if you would, would want to build a Jarvis, similar like Jarvis uh, demo, uh, I think currently the easiest way to be is to use, you know, like either web or Unity SDK and then connect it to GPT-3 and you will get some sort of, well, amazing results because actually GPT-3 can answer any kind of question and by any i mean anything that was you can find in the internet because gpt3 was trained on wikipedia some sort of english novels etc so if the data was at some point published there then that's something that probably gpt3 can answer too so yeah i would say that's my answer to how to create a jarvis project currently thank you very much for answering my question i'll check it sure and if you have any troubles or you know like 
trying to find a way on actually use GPT-3 as conversational AI, then just you know like send us a message, message maybe over Discord. Maybe that's in an, an interesting topic, topic in itself. So one next time we have a webinar, I might actually uh, show you guys on actually how to use GPT-3 as conversational AI, because that for some of you, that might be also a unique selling point uh, for your customers. So yeah, if you if you want to do so, then just maybe now you can already type in the chat that you are interested in learning how actually to use GPT-3 as conversational AI engine. So at least we know who to invite to this kind of webinar once we do. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Um, okay, coming back to the topic because we still have 30 minutes to go and yeah. And I do want to make, okay, where were we? So we already connected the, the uh, voice activity detection to our scene. So we, we have everything uh, now, which basically makes your virtual being useful in any kind of like VR or AR environment. Because those are the environments that I have mentioned. I would say that the go-to interface is actually voice. Um, the supplementary interface might be like some sort of quick reply buttons or product cards, like something which is being displayed in a scene but not as a main form of interface. Okay, um, so we are done with the scene. All that is needed for, for virtual being to work with, with your avatar is already there. So the next step that we will be doing now is actually configuring um, the AR, um, AR scene to the end. And by that, I mean, by default, once you just launch this kind of scene, this will just, well, initialize the AR kit but you will not see any kind of like visual response from that. So essentially there is something called AR Plane Manager. And this is something which basically visualizes any kind of like flat surface being detected in by a, either AR code or AR kit. By default, it actually uh, this, the, detects both um, horizontal and vertical planes. For virtual beings, it doesn't make much doesn't make much sense to actually put your virtual being on any kind of like vertical surfaces, but maybe in your project it will. Uh, I don't know. So usually I just you know like the change the de detection mode to horizontal. And the other thing which you might want to add is plane prefab. And plane prefab is being used to basically visualize this, the the surfaces that are being detected by by uh, AR foundation and um, actually the AR sample template that we uh, created comes actually with predefined uh, prefab for AR plane visual visualization. So you just need to, from example assets folder, you just need to drag and drop AR plane prefab. Okay, so we already have it in our scene. And uh, I will just, you know, like add a few more things uh, in advance, not to go step by step on what is going happening, because this will already visualize scenes in in the um, in the project that you will later on compile on your phone, but it will not do anything um, when you interact with the scene. And what you would want to do as a first step, if you build an AR application. So once a user detects the flat surface, uh, and that might be like either a floor or a table um, in his home or whatever he currently is, then that's the place that you want to start your AR experience. And basically I will add now a script, which once um, AR detects some sort of plane, allows a user to click on that plane. And in the place that they will click, the virtual being will spawn. And for that particular thing, I will quickly create a script, or actually I will copy paste it uh, because I don't want to bore you with scripting it, with writing it from, from scratch. So I'll actually borrow it from the previous project that I have done. That's not the one, that's the our mobile app, which is being released as we speak. This is the, the my you know like testing session that I've done for in the preparation for today. And I created something which is called uh, enable on AR plane. If at any point, well, probably that's a script that we will distribute as well 
uh, as a part of our SDK, I'll just make a note of that. Uh, well, I do have a recording, so I, I did have made a note already to add it also as a part of our SDK, just to make it easy for you guys to actually, well, build AR experiences. So what I will do right now is actually, well, I had opened it on the second screen and I'm just drag and dropping it um, from, drag and dropping it, but I, where is the project currently? I minimized it. Where did I send it to? <laughs> no, that's not the window. Oh, that's the, not the one. So I think that might be the one. Okay, yeah, I did made something strange with the product. Okay, once again, sorry guys for uh, keeping you wait. Drag and dropping it for, for sure now. So drag and drop it now. So I will not go into details uh, on how the script works, but essentially what you just need to do once you have this kind of script, and as I already promised, this will be late distributed later on, is to um, add it uh, as a component. So add it, add a component, search for enable on AR plane, and this is something that um, already, you know, like the, the, the behavior is already described. So what you will have to do now is actually to provide it with a scene root, so essentially now what will happen is whenever I will be um, hitting the, the user will be hitting the, the detected plane. Yeah, I will, I'm doing the tutorial live. Okay, Mark, uh, okay. If you are doing it live, just let me try to share it in the chat. Maybe there is an option to do so. There is some way to do so. Okay, so just let me open it. Here. Okay, so feel free to download this one, Mark. And uh, well, if I hope you did because I, I'm speaking too much, so I do hope that you were able to keep up with the session. If you have some sort of issue with your project, then just let me know, and I will, you know, like once again, um, make the step that you were basically stuck at, uh, if you if you require. Uh, because yeah, it's, if, if it's your first time doing uh, the follow-on, then that might be tricky. Okay, I just want to make sure, continuing with the, the plan. I already selected the scene, uh, this, the scene that I will be spawning when the user will be tapping on the plane. What you want to make sure of is to make sure that you don't have any extra transform on your uh, scene route. Because if you, if you have, then your co content will be basically moved by this vector uh, in, in the 3D. So if you don't zero it out, so essentially your avatar, even if your user will tap in a place, might end up in some sort of strange position, including, you know, 20 meters in, in air, for instance. So you don't want to do that. And that goes both for the scene as well for the avatar. So essentially, one, once the user clicks the, um, the, the detected plane, then this script will um, this script will actually uh, set it in the particular position of of the plane, uh, the raycast with the plane. Okay, I don't want to do to do. Well, you will see later on uh, what is the result. So uh, I'm actually lacking the words. So that's the first thing. And the script that I have created also um, rotates the scene uh, towards the user. So if you basically drag and drop the camera, so it doesn't matter where your user will be in the scene, what will happen once he taps on the plane will both set the scene in the place that he tapped and rotate the whole scene towards the user. So essentially you, uh, your user will see face of your avatar instead of back of your avatar, which probably is the best choice of, of experience you don't want to your avatars, uh, your virtual beings to turn back, turn their backs on your users. So yeah, so now we're done. So what we have already is we have set up the AR kit, AR session. We added the script to, uh, to allow users to choose where the virtual being will spawn. And then before we already configured the scene with all the necessary components to, to make it work. For 
now I'm basically moving to deployment. So I actually will disable the testing camera just to make sure that once I'm running it on my iPhone, that there is no extra camera which might, uh, you know, like um, take over as a main camera in the scene. So this is this is enough. So what you do should do now once you are at this stage already with the project. Then once again, you might want to check whether you actually have selected the proper, proper, proper platform, which is either iOS or Android platform, and that you have added your scene uh, to, to the build. And once you do, then just click build and run. What I like to do is actually to generate a separate folder for keeping your builds because you might have plenty. You might have an, an AR build you, for Android. You might have an AR build for iOS but maybe you use the same project for kiosk application. So basically, probably that's the way to keep it clean on what you actually are currently building. And since this project will be just compiled for iOS and Android later on uh, in the future, then I'm just, you know, like adding iOS uh, build folder. I'm choosing it. Okay, this warning comes from Ready Player Me SDK, so you don't have to worry about that. You can, oh, actually, I will fix that because this will be um, probably um, confusing me later on. So I'm just, you know, like you should, if you are ready, player me about the partner, then you might want to um, input here your domain. Uh, I'm just putting mine. Um, so this is something to do just to avoid uh, unnecessary interruption. And once again, I'm clicking build and run choosing the iOS uh, build folder and click the button. And now we have to wait because what is happening right now is, well, basically compiling the Unity project into the uh, Xcode project because Xcode in case of um, um, iOS projects is still necessary if you want to run it on your iPhone. For Android, actually, you don't have to have uh, Xcode installed. So essentially, Unity will install your um, application on your phone if you have it connected already. So for actually Android, it's it's a bit simpler. But yeah, since I'm currently on Mac and I am uh, have uh, only an iPhone available, then uh, then yeah, then then I'm using this this uh, build. Okay, so you will see like if if in your build process something fails, you have a very detailed um, error logs. So in this case, since we are building it with our SDK, uh, and our SDK uses microphone at the moment, uh, because I, I have added the voice recorder, then you do want to add uh, the microphone description to your settings. And basically, this is something which you configure in your project settings under player tab. And then this is uh, somewhere here, yeah. So microphone used for communicating communicating with uh, virtual B. This is something which uh, which is required by App Store because this essentially they don't anymore allow to publish any kind of app with it without this description, which basically use uh, which use uh, either microphone or camera uh, features. So this is something that you you want want to add. I might actually change one thing. Okay, maybe let's change to automatically sign because you might want to add your um, Apple developer uh, team identifier here just to make it easier to develop, but it is not required. So essentially, if you are a developer and you have Xcode installed and create your, you know, like Xcode developer account, you might want to do it for free. You don't have to buy the team, uh, the official like license, developer license, until you are ready to release it to App Store, then it is required. So, okay, so I'm just changed those two things. Once again, I will click build and run, choose the same folder, and hopefully this time it will actually open up, end up in Xcode. So just bear with me a moment. It's uh, we, we only have 22 minutes to, to go in this session, but I do promise well, I will do everything that is possible to be done with, with it uh, in 22 minutes, because I do believe that some of you have some things to attend to afterwards. Um, so don't want to keep you too much, obviously. Um, yeah, so we are, we've successfully ended up with, with Xcode. 
this failed because um, because well we don't have any like a team Apple uh, signing profile selected by default. I think that's an issue. Yeah, signing for Unity iPhone requires a development team. And what you should do in this case is actually to click uh, in the project hierarchy window. I think that's how it's called the um, the tab with your Unity project. This will open up the uh, your project settings tab. And there is a tab called signing and capabilities. And that's where you should actually select a team. And I'm not sure how it looks like if you do it for the first time, but I do believe that you should be able to add an account and essentially once you do and create your personal team with Xcode, then you might want to uh, select the team. What you might also want to change, um, actually I will change that in Unity, so I don't forget that. This is something called, uh, where is the setting? the package package identifier i did forgot where where you configure that just let me check where come because essentially what i'm trying to change right now is the band by bundle identifier i can change that here uh, just to make sure that i have something less random like verb webinar webinar uh, dot demo ar whatever but if you don't want to do it every time you compile to ARKit, there is a place to do that in Unity. Oh, it's here. So this is the identification and bundle identifier. So you should just basically choose, you know, like your own domain by the identifier, which is either your, you know, company uh, domain and then some sort of uh, a string for, for your application name. Okay, so I'm changing that right now also here just to make sure that I, I don't have it, I don't have to change that every time I'm compiling for, for Unity. And now I have my iPhone connected and you will actually see the result of my iPhone because I recently learned that you can actually, when you have your iPhone connected, you can stream your iPhone to, to Zoom uh, even. So I will now, I have my iPhone connected and selected. Uh, I have a product ready, signing profile, uh, the chosen uh, team selected and now i'm just clicking play it will now start a build process it will take a moment but at the end of this process it will also install the application on my phone so just let me uh, do that so you don't have to look here anymore i will now try to change the screen sharing to my iphone and hopefully Your screen sharing is paused. I hope I will make it work somehow, but I'm not sure if I will be seeing the result. Okay, connect your iPhone to your iPad. Okay, I did do that. I, I don't see that here. Sure. Hmm. Can you see my screen uh, in any case or not yet? No. Okay, so do I have a backup plan for that? Hmm. Yeah, there is some sort of error now. So it's basically disconnected for some reason. It's not detecting my phone now. Oh, it does. Okay, so I do believe now you can see my 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 other device. Hopefully, I hit select. Yes, perfect. Okay, so what has happened? I think I need to restart Xcode again just to make sure that app will install because there were some sort of connection issues. So it's now installing verb working demo, it now opens up. Okay. And what you see here is now the, the AR plane prefab that I were basically drag and dropping at some point to plane manager. 
This is the component responsible for rendering the, those small white dots in the scene. So you can see it already detected my floor. I, it can actually detect also my desk if needed. So any kind of like horizontal surfaces that I have mentioned. Okay, so I see uh, that this is being detected. So what I will try to do now is tap on the screen to spawn my visual being. Okay, I do have to confirm the microphone Hi. permission. I'm Chris, CEO of Verb, or his virtual representation, to be exact. Layer. Real Chris is probably doing some CEO stuff, but I'll be happy to step in here and talk to you a bit. You can also schedule a meeting How with the you? real Chris. How does that sound? How are you? Okay, I think I had, I might have my, okay, headphones detected, so what a microphone I need now. Try to disable this right now. How are you? How are you? Okay, I do think that maybe I will have to restart actually because I'm not sure if my headphones at some point, at some point didn't take over. Um, can you still sh see the screen? Yeah, I do, I think you do. So just let me do once again. Hi. I'm Chris, CEO at Verb, or his virtual representation, How to are be you? exact. Real Chris is probably doing some CEO stuff, How but are I'll be you? happy to step in here and talk to you a bit. I'm great and oh, happy okay. to be How here. How it works. Uh, so what now... I can tell you a bit mm -hmm. about Verb and its product, or I can schedule okay, you guys, a meeting with... I, can I will actually stop that, but I hope... Yeah, so... We were successful. <laughs> all in all, the project that we created... Uh, we were able to run it on AR kit. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks, Mar uh, Mark. Um, so yeah, mm. I will go back to actually screen sharing my desktop view uh, once again, uh, because maybe you might have some questions still. But essentially, that's all you need to do if you were to do a very basic AR project. Uh, what I can say to you guys that even if you don't uh, have the skills or you will, yes, so it might work with other language. So there's essentially there is no limit to that. But well, uh, sorry, I saw your question started responding to that. But just to finish my thought, the previous thought. So this is the basic setup. Obviously, if you were to publish your own app, it will require a bit more work because probably you will have to build some sort of dashboard menu to configure all the settings for your users, like selecting the proper microphone, uh, changing the sens sens sensitivity of your microphone and so on and so on. So the list goes on of the features that are needed to actually build a very basic application, which is publishable. Because essentially I would say probably this project that we have made, we wouldn't be able to publish to, to App Store. Uh, App Store is quite, um, you know, like uh, restricted when it comes to what you can actually release. And it has to be a feasible application. But uh, even if you don't have a skills and you don't have, uh, you, don't, you don't want to waste your time building the whole project, we have, as I mentioned, on Monday, we have released a project called uh, Verb Beings. This will be published to Google Play and uh, App Store. And this is basically, and I can just briefly show you the very basic and what we call feasible uh, application that you might want to publish um, to, to either Google Play or App Store. So what it, in our case, it will do, it will allow you to test your virtual beings. So we do have like an, in, in your dashboard, if you have one uh, in our platform, you will see that you have now, um, I think this one doesn't yet. Uh, because it wasn't being upgraded, that you have under your Bing configuration and QR code. So before you even build your own project with Unity SDK, you might want to use our app to test it out on how it looks and works in AR. Once again, this is something that you can use to, to demonstrate it to your customers or whatever. And essentially, you just uh, once you have our mobile app, then that's something that you can just scan your QR code in your dashboard, and this will set up your Bing. And by setting it up, it means it will actually uh, work in both on phones without any kind of AR features as well with AR. So currently I can actually launch it on my computer. So this is Wojciech uh, Bing that I'm now uh, using. So actually his Bing is very basic one. I think he's just using it for, for 
testing, so not, not something fancy, but in our application, you might want to talk to Rika or to my virtual being. So this is something which is part of our mobile app, but essentially you can, you know, like test your, or even your, you know, like friend uh, in a virtual being. So if you at any point will be interested in sharing your virtual being, then you might want to, um, well, just hit us and we might publish it on our blog or, or whatever. So just so others can test whatever you have created. Um, and yeah, but Wojtek already answered. Sorry, I wanted just to finish my five initial thought of what it means to actually release a mobile application to either Google Play or App Store. But yeah, uh, dashboards, uh, your virtual being dashboard can work in any language. So we do have uh, for interactive virtual beings, we do have a speech recognition for most modern languages, which includes Spanish, Japanese, Chinese, Polish, English, and so on. Um, and the same goes for uh, speech generation. So we have mul multiple neural voices for all the mentioned languages. So once you do it and configure it, the proper setting in your uh, dashboard, create a conversational AI, which works in that language, um, then yeah, obviously you can, you can use any other language that you want. If that was your question, because language might also relate to a different framework but i do believe that was related to voice wasn't it mark hope we still have you oh yes sorry i i i haven't uh, heard the questions yeah so the question was i do believe that your well, your question uh, was related to speech recognition and speech yeah. generation in other languages yeah Yes, absolutely. Okay. And I see in the dashboard that uh, I have in Google Speech that I can add that voice parameter and I can go to Amazon. And uh, is it um, a features that you that you plan mm -hmm. for so I, uh, for Google Speech? Correct me if I'm wrong, but you might be using our presentation mode already instead of. Uh, ah, yes, what? yes. For the moment, my status is inactive. Uh, in, in, so you need to, for if you have inactive virtual being for interactive being, then you do need to provide your credit card details. Okay, yes. Don't worry, there is a trial available. And if you need more time to test it out, then obviously just let us know. We can extend it a bit if, if needed for your interactive being, if, if you, need, okay. if you need one. Yeah, mm, so since we are here, even for your presentation uh, being, you might want to actually, you might be able to create a different uh, script in different language. So in my case, I did have created, uh, yeah, I did converted my pitch deck into an interactive conversation, but I also added a script in Germany and Japanese. And once you go to the script editor, then you just need to select a different voice if, if you need. Um, and that's the only thing that you need to do if you want your virtual being to speak in any other language. Okay, and yeah, if you want to test it out, since we already saw the presentation, Meditor, uh, just to give you an understanding, so what you actually can create with presentation mode, feel free to, so presentation mode, presentation being, mode being, um, this is my, and this is web preview, but the other one, the interactive one, you might also want to test with this being. So i just posted it in chat, interactive, um, interactive being conversation. Here we go. So feel free to chat to them, uh, both of them. Uh, the, the interactive one is more advanced, but don't expect too much because we didn't spend too much time on building this, this chatbot. I think we spent a maximum two days to, to build, uh, you know, like the basic uh, schedule an appointment scenario. So if you want to schedule an appointment with me, feel free to do that using my interactive being. And there is some, a bit of basic Q and A there as well. So you can ask uh, my interactive Chris about Alexa. Uh, how are you? How old are you? Uh, do you like football and so on? So here are the list of the things that uh, my virtual interactive virtual being will respond to 
and obviously that basically depends on you if you want to spend like two weeks or even more on building conversational ai then i can guarantee you that you will have a very good well you do definitely need a bit of experience for that uh, so once again if you want to i recommend the, the previous webinar from olga because she explained how to build a really good chatbot uh, but essentially, it basically depends on you. If you want to spend more time, then definitely you will get a much better result and your virtual being might feel like a regular, um, well, maybe not a regular human being, but definitely like a being that you can communicate uh, with. So yeah, that basically depends on how much time you want to spend. And already promised, I saw some of you interested in that. If you connect in our dashboard, instead of like building a chatbot, if you connect your GPT-3 engine. So this is something that if you have your own dashboard, then you just need to select custom chatbot. There is a documentation on how to actually connect GPT-3. Uh, we will have to make sure if it's up to date, uh, but more or less, if you go with the document, okay, not this one. We did had, I think that was the one. Yeah, there was some sort of, Mm, I will have to check. Okay, so probably it's not up to date. We were migra migrating to new uh, documentation um, website. So we have lost some of the documentation in the process. Well, it has to be migrated basically. So we do it one by one. So I do see now right now that there is a documentation missing on how to integrate your GPT into free into, into dashboard. So yeah, please uh, bear, be patient. We will add it. Um, in the next uh, few weeks for sure uh, on how to actually connect the GPT-3 to your virtual being and then I can guarantee you, you that if you connect GPT-3 to your virtual being then it will actually feel like a regular conversation with a being with a human being okay uh, I think I'm done with the content with the basic content for today's session I do hope that you enjoyed I given that eight of you still are here uh, then it's yeah it's for me it's an indication that you did like it um, overall uh, i do I see a question so in the example you just built did the animation slips in body movements come from the ready player me sdk or verb just curious they come from verb so both the animations that we are using and you were able to see on uh, the project that i have made they basically the one that i've been basically drag and dropping here informal RPM controller. Um, this is part of our uh, SDK, RPM mail package. And that includes also all the, you will see that you there are, you know, like the folder structure for all the animations that you can use, uh, then our SDK uses. Um, so feel free to check them out. And essentially, if you are doing your own custom 3D model, then that's something that you will have to retarget uh, on your own, or just let us know and we can, do this kind of service as well. Um, and lip sync, this is, yeah, obviously this is something which, which we have a script for that, just make, to point you out. There was a component called verb speech player, and this basically um, has 70 items that we are currently supporting for lip syncs. Um, so, well, if you integrate your our SDK with our cloud, uh, Unity cloud, with our verb cloud, then this is something that is basically being um, is coming from our server as metadata. So if you were to connect uh, your own custom TTS engine, it will probably not work. <laughs> but uh, we do have an option. So essentially, our whole, whole technology can be launched on premise. And if at some point you will have a project which cannot be basically published in, in the cloud. So you have like a co co customer which is very sensitive about, you know, like the, the data and where they are being uh, processed. Then all that is required for, for our virtual beings to work might be launched on premise, but this is basically um, our uh, customized pricing for that. So feel free to, to reach out to us if you do have this kind of needs. Um, so I do hope that it answered your your question in details. I tend to over over answer some questions because I just may want to make sure that you do understand, yeah, how it uh, all works. And since it's a dive deep session, then I'm that's why I try to do that.
over the session. Okay, do we have any other questions or maybe, you know, some of you wants to share how you want to build, um, what you want to build with Verb. Okay, but we do have one more question. So can we manage this animation just changing the JSON file? So what do you mean by manage this animation, Mark? Feel free to unmute because I think that's a very broad yeah, so question. Just, just uh, um, uh, depends on the, the question and the answers. Um, we can maybe manage the animation now. I think uh, mm -hmm. I have uh, seen these features in the, the documentation. Perfect question. Um, so I will actually demonstrate it to you. It currently works either with it more. It works in all the engines, but the the we have a um, built-in editor for that. And basically, once you use our verb general skill set in interactive being, or you use presentation mode. So just to make sure that you see, we have a very basic component which allows you to generate not only the response of your being, but actually influence the behavior. So you can okay. actually from here influence the gestures that are being displayed by the virtual being later on. So this is something that you can actually do on the fly in the cloud and you don't have you don't have to re-upload your JSON configuration file. So once you create your project, uh, Unity project and compile it for and distribute it to Google Play or, or App Store, then you are done. Then you just need okay. to use uh, either our built-in editor or in your uh, conversational AI engine. Um, that's where you just need to, you can change those those uh, behaviors. Okay. Yeah. So this is um, how it, it works. works mm -hmm. It works with uh, Dialogflow? Do you have uh, an for that with Dialogflow? Yes. So it works in Dialogflow. For Dialogflow, we don't have like a built-in plugin that you can use uh, for that. So essentially we do provide, um, just get me, uh, let me open the proper page. So there is a Dialogflow uh, mm -hmm. documentation. And then there, at the end, you have like an advanced oh, yes, okay, section. Yes, yes. And then the that. only okay. thing that you need to add is a custom payload to your responses. And then there is a JSON that you need to basically make sure that you use this kind of structure. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there is a behavior section and that's how you can actually influence the what kind of like gesture is being displayed by your virtual being. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, and the list is available. So whatever you will see here in the list, this is something which is being displayed, can be displayed dynamically by, by our virtual beings. Okay, great. Okay, so if there are any more questions, just let us know. And if, you know, like I'm now curious a bit because I do see, you know, like Elliot and you, Mark, being, uh, being quite active. So do you want to share with others? Uh, how do you plan to... If you can, obviously, because if it's like a secret project, then obviously um, say nothing. But if you want, uh, feel free to share. Mm, I can tell you a bit about what we are working on at the moment. So um, some of the projects which we are now working on in our enterprise um, um, business stream, let's say that. We do work on creating the sales assistant for one of the retail brands. Uh, I can't say the name because, yeah, that's currently under NDA. So it's a pilot for one of the chains. Um, hopefully in two, two months time, we will be able to share it as a case study. Uh, so actually, in this case, we will be using our Unity SDK and we will be designing a custom 3D model uh, for them. So which essentially means that we will be, in this case, retargeting all the animations that are being uh, distributed in the SDK. Mm, so that just to give you uh, what is actually needed if you do this kind, but I already mentioned this a couple of times, so I'm just now repeating myself. Um, so this is one of the case studies that we are working on. The other one is, um, the other one is for museum. So in this case, we actually are working with them using our Unreal SDK. Um, and they will be here, like using like MetaHuman avatar as a base, probably most probably because it's still not decided. We will still, you know, like see how it develops. But in this case, you know, uh, only the, the only thing that changes is uh, Unreal SDK. The whole uh, cloud infrastructure is the same in those two projects. So that's what is the benefit of actually running your virtual being in the cloud. 
So essentially, you then can use all of our SDKs, Web SDK, Unity, and Unity SDK to produce different results and different applications. So once you create a great sales assistant, then you might yeah launch it on web. You might want it launch it on ARKit and ARCard with Unity, but you can also just you know like uh, launch it on digital kiosk as a meta human. So av avatars can change. So the, the the core of your avatar will still the same, which is the most important aspect. So how what your virtual being is speaking about and how it speaks. So I mean, what kind of voice tone of voice the, it is using? But then the avatar you can change. You can use different avatar on web. You can use different avatar in when building VR or AR application and different kind of avatar if you are building like this kind of photorealistic kiosk for actually high-end high devices in this case. So yeah, so that's the two case studies that I can share with you, just maybe as a, some sort of inspiration. If you don't want to share publicly, but if you do have some, court of some, some questions on maybe how to approach one of the case studies that you will be working on, or the project that you will be working on, then obviously you know how to find us over email and on Discord. So feel free to, to um, let us know there. And obviously we'll do as much as possible to assist you because definitely we want to build a, a great product. I mean, great cloud platform that is easy to you for you guys. And also SDKs, which are easy to you for you, for you guys as well. So you don't have to re reinvent the wheel because obviously of one mind one create a virtual being from scratch but then you will spend definitely some time figuring all the details out hopefully uh, by using our sdk you can save month of months of development at least and do it on on scale maybe more than one project but a couple of them as well Okay, so I think uh, that's all what I can mention to you today. Um, yes, just to... just last thing, uh, I haven't received the script for enable uh, the higher plane. You haven't received the script? Were you yes. able to download it from the chat? Yes, no, uh, I think uh, I haven't oh, seen it from the chat. Sorry, I do know what happened. I did so send I have... it as... I have built the project that uh, I have been this. Uh, yeah, yeah this sorry. Script. I will now once again share it. Sorry. My bad. Yeah, I, by much. mistake, I just share it with Wojtek. No, I don't <laughs> want to, to disturb you during the presentation. So uh, no thank you for that. Uh, to check this out right now. I think it's. Yes, now... okay. I will, I will build the project, but uh, I haven't uh, any uh, errors. So uh, I think it's good. Thank you very much for that. Okay. So. Um, probably make sure that you download it right now because I think the history of the chat will yeah. not ava yes. be available. Perfect. Uh, so for any of you, if, if you still haven't downloaded and you are interested in the script that I had mentioned and used before, then yeah, feel free to do so right now. If you don't make it and then you want to watch this video later on, on YouTube, feel free to let us know um, if you can find the script uh, in our SDK. But I think by the time you will actually see the video, I think our SDK will be updated with the script as well. So hopefully you don't have to. Okay, so I think that's all for today's session. Uh, I would say it's like a basic introduction into working with Verb SDK. Uh, and what we have built today was an AR application, uh, which should work with ARCon and ARKit. Um, yeah, so if you have any more questions, once again, uh, feel free to, to let us know. Use email hello at verb.ai or just, you know, like send your message uh, on our Discord. Uh, the Discord link will probably will be also in the description of the video if you watch it on YouTube or in, in our social media. But for all of you that were present today, you might still copy paste it and or click it from from the chat. OK, so I think uh, we are done for today. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I hope to see you all the next time we do uh, our webinars or coding sessions. We will see what comes first. OK, so ending the session for today. Thank you all. Bye.